Welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade, and yes, it's another Album Reviews episode. I, what gives with September? It's turned into Album Reviews Month on Tom's Hit Parade. But like I said before, don't get used to it. It's very unu It's most unprecedented, Rufus, that I have this many albums to talk about in one month. Uh, in fact, I, I'm pretty darn sure, at least as of right now, there's not another album that I'm going to be interested in for probably a month. So, as I said, you know, don't get used to album reviews this regularly. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, but before I get to my album reviews today, uh, there are going to be two of them again. Uh, pretty soon, one of these days, I will get the confidence level to do a single album in a video. So, uh, But before I actually get to the album reviews, I wanted to talk for a moment about my rating system. Uh, I've decided to overhaul it. Uh, the system that I've been using up until now, the uh, you know, on a scale of 100 points based on the percentage I'm likely to keep the record or album uh, three to five years after I've bought it. It was something I kind of just threw together at the last minute, honestly, um, just because I felt my channel needed a rating system of some sort. But I've never been happy with it, um, partly because it's something I threw together at the last minute. Uh, first of all, I give it, you know, up until now you've seen, I give, I've been giving my reviews, you know, a five point, you know, like 60 to 75, 60 to 70 or 80 to 85 or whatever uh, point margin. And also, you know, my description of my rating, you know, albums I'm going to keep in three to five years. I mean, you know, that there is another kind of vague ballpark thing that's never really, uh, it's just never really felt comfortable to me. And, and also I just kind of, I kind of have mixed feelings about assigning ratings to albums. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I mean, nearly all YouTube channels do that, and of course all magazine reviews and all that um, give ratings. It's just, you know, for me, boiling an album's uh, listenability down to a single point on a finite scale is a little, you know, it's, it's kind of deceiving, a little misleading some t some ways. Not that I'm saying anybody does that on purpose, it's just, you know, I had a uh, written form music blog on the internet um, a while ago. It hasn't been updated in years. I think it's still out there somewhere. Um, and I never gave ratings or points to albums that I reviewed. I wrote three reasonably sized paragraphs, and that was that. I, I basically left it up to the reader to decide, okay, should I pick this album up or not? And because that's kind of the way that I've always uh, taken album reviews in magazines and whatever. So I thought briefly about just you know, abandoning the ratings altogether. Um, I know that Sam Bennett out there, a great channel, by the way, if you haven't found his channel yet, I'll link to it in the description. Uh, Sam Bennett, that's one That's one of the YouTubers that doesn't assign ratings. He just talks about the album, says what he thinks about it, and that's that. And, uh, but, you know, I'm not sure if I want to do that, so I decided to, I'm still going to give a kind of a rating, but, you know, I tried to figure out, I tried to brainstorm and spitball about, you know, how I was going to do the scale, what sort of a scale I was going to do. And when I was just about to give up, I remembered the old adage, a picture is worth a thousand words. So that's the system that I've come up with. I'm uh, going to let my face do the talking with uh, summing up the album review. It will be a facial expression. Uh, the top end of the scale will look like this. The bottom end of the scale will look like this pretty self-explanatory there. And the midpoint on the scale will look like this. And the uh, the rest of the ratings will be various stages of smiles, frowns, thumbs up, thumbs down, that kind of thing. So anyway, that will be my new rating system, at least for now. Uh, we'll see how it works uh, with a dry run for these two albums today. Um, as always, let me know what you think of the system. Uh, comments are welcome, suggestions, whatever. Just uh, fire away with your thoughts. Uh, so let's get on with these two albums today. Um, first album is by, by a group called Ultraphonics, and the album is called Original Human Music. Now this is a super group consisting of Living Color vocalist Corey Glover, uh, guitarist George Lynch from the 80s metal band Dokken, and bassist Pancho Tomaselli, who uh, worked recently in recent years with uh, the group War, which was uh, prominent in the 70s, as well as drummer Chris Moore. Now, uh, three of these four guys, Lynch Moore and Tomaselli, actually previously recorded with Fishbone singer Angelo Moore on Project Infidelica, which I had no idea about this until I 
or about about Infidelica until I was preparing the notes for this review. So I'm going to have to take a look at uh, that project as well. But anyway, now I have a kind of a spotty track record with new supergroups that are made up of uh, members from 70s and 80s groups. Uh, for instance, The Empty Hearts, which you may have seen in my uh, 2014 uh, Favorite Albums Countdown. I liked it at the time, but it uh, unfortunately didn't stand up to repeat listens, so I eventually uh, got rid of it. But uh, anyway, yeah, I saw this at the Sam Goody down in Medford. Uh, was down there last weekend. YouTubed a couple of the songs and decided to pick it up. They sounded very promising. Uh, now, this, this group is definitely a, a blend of its members' past projects. You get some of the, uh, the socially conscious lyrics uh, that Living Color uh, dabbled in from time to time. Uh, and the heavy, muscly rock sound of Dokken. Uh, as well as a uh, the strong rhythm section that War was famous for, back in the 70s at least. and uh, But beyond that, uh, this group even, they kind of throw in some of the the funk stylings of uh, that bring to mind the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, in fact, if I hadn't read the credits for this uh, release, I would have thought that Flea was the bassist. Honestly, that's that's how good it gets at some points with the, the funk element. And uh, yeah, this is a great album. Uh, lots of socially conscious lyrics, as I said. Uh, there's a great song called Walk, Run, Crawl, and another one called Counterculture, and those, those uh, vary between thinly veiled and completely unveiled sociopolitical commentary. In fact, the first words in the song Walk, Run, Crawl are Standing Rock. So, and I don't think I've ever, I don't know of any other song that has uh, mentioned or dealt with the Standing Rock uh, incident from a couple of years ago. So. Yeah, there's uh, great socially conscious lyrics, but those two songs are also really solid rock tracks. Uh, there's another song called Wasteland, which is a, it's a great kind of an epic sounding um, song with kind of an, uh, an echoey sort of a sound to it and, and uh, a sort of a quasi-militaristic drum line, you know, kind of a, a marching kind of a beat to it. That's a really good song. Um, but if you're looking for catchy choruses, uh, you're not let down in that department either. There are a couple of great songs that fit that bill. Uh, there's a song called Take a Stand, which has a great catchy chorus. And another good thing about that song is uh, it gives the oppor opportunity for the guitarist Lynch and the bassist Tomaselli to, uh, to do some soloing in the break in that song. It's just fantastic. And another catchy song called Soul Control. It's got a catchy chorus in it. And, uh, and again, here's where the... Uh, the Chili Peppers funk influence comes through. Um, it's not a slap bass that uh, Thomas Ellie plays, like you know, like uh, Flea plays in Chili Peppers, but it's still it's just great bass. The, the rhythm section of this band is just fantastic. Uh, and uh, the song "Ain't Too Late" is an interesting song because the uh, the verses are spoken rather than sung, which which again kind of recalls the Chili Peppers that you know uh, Anthony Kiedis from time to time would would speak the lyrics rather than sing them. So you know, there's another. Um, hint of Chili Peppers for you, and but that song also has an absolutely thundering bass-heavy chorus that just it just kicks your ass. I mean seriously, that's just a great song. The one weak spot on this album is uh, the only ballad. Coincidentally, it's called "Heartful of Rain," and I'm not sure if it's the uh, the vocalist Corey Glover, if that's just not his wheelhouse, or I mean I know the lyrics on that song are kind of seem to fall a little bit flat as well, so. Uh, it, it's probably a good thing that that was the only ballad on this album, but uh, you know, other than that, it's a, a very good album. I would recommend picking it up, and uh, I guess my uh, rating on that would be, yeah, that's about right. Okay, now the second album I'll be reviewing today is the fifth album by the British indie rock band The Kooks called Let's Go Sunshine. Now I can't remember exactly how I found out about The Kooks, uh, but it was probably because they, uh, their song Naive which was actually from their first album, was featured in at least one movie and at least one TV show back in the day. Uh, although I actually didn't buy any of their albums until after their third album, Junk of the Heart, had already been released. So in the grand scheme of things, I'm relatively new to the kooks, I suppose. Uh, but they are, they've just won me over. They're a pretty consistently good indie rock band. Although their fourth album, called Listen, um, deviated a little bit. They uh, they kind of went and experimented on that album with a uh, slightly more beat-heavy, quasi R&B funk, slightly hip-hop aesthetic, uh, which I mean I thought was refreshing and new, but still at the same time, it ultimately wasn't quite them. So I'm I'm kind.
kind of glad that they ditched that. Uh, word has it they were going to kind of continue down that road with their fifth album, but uh, I'm kind of glad they didn't because as, as a result, I almost didn't buy this. Uh, just because, you know, Listen was good, but not great. Uh, but anyway, this album, um, it's relatively light in terms of lyrical subject matter. That's kind of the downside as compared with their previous album. But honestly, you know, as I said before, there's nothing wrong with light subject matter in the lyrics. Uh, I don't mind that at all. Uh, all. And it does have plenty of hooks. Uh, so I, I was very happy when I picked this up just because it was more hook heavy than I expected it to be. Uh, especially when uh, the singles All the Time, um, No Pressure, and Four Leaf Clover. Those songs are very catchy. They're just very representative of the album. Uh, now, my probably my favorite song on the album, though, is the one with the most unusual title. It's called Chicken Bone. Uh, it basically refers to what uh, the protagonist's girlfriend call, or, or wife or whoever calls him. Uh, it's just got one of those songs that's just got a great sing-along chorus, you know. And, and speaking of sing-along choruses, uh, Pamela is another one that's just fantastic. The song Believe, which is track four, that's, that is actually one of the better anthems I've heard in the last several years. I, I really like that one. Um, another, uh, a good uh, mid-tempo, kind of a power balladish song with a really soaring chorus is uh, the song Swing Low. That's really good. And uh, probably my second favorite al song on this album is called Honey Bee. Uh, that's just what I get from that song is it, it kind of reminds me of an Everly Brothers song covered by the Beatles. That's kind of the vibe that I get from that song. I, I just love that one. That's one of the two or three that I come back to regularly. So uh, yeah, this I mean this album doesn't break any new ground or take any chances, but I really enjoyed it. And uh, you know I, I don't demand that my music be groundbreaking necessarily. You know for better or for worse, take that as you will. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking for a decently entertaining listen from a, a dependable band that pretty much won't let you down, um, you can't go wrong with the Kooks' Let's Go Sunshine. So yeah, um, I would give this album a... Uh, yeah, that's what I'd give it. So uh, yeah, I was kind of hoping I'd have more to say about that album, but uh, I guess no matter how much you love an album, sometimes there's just not a whole lot to say about it. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's uh, New Reviews video. Uh, what did you think of either of these albums if you've listened to them yet? Let me know in the comments and uh, please subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thank you to everyone uh, who has subscribed and who is a regular viewer. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you so much for watching uh, a new video next, week next weekend hopefully and remember life's too short to be a music snob.